Hey guys, it's Bridgette with San Diego Seed Company. And what am I doing standing in the middle of a really beautiful apartment complex? I'm in the middle of the city, and this is one of our headquarters for where we run our seed company. And we produce hundreds and hundreds of seedling starts that we plant out on the farm. And I wanna showcase this to you guys because I want you to see that you know, you can be an urban farmer and you can garden and you can grow and produce so many plants in an urban space. Now I do have a large greenhouse, but I don't actually even use that large greenhouse to start my seeds. I use it mostly for drying my seed crops. We start a majority of our seedlings indoors in this really cool spot that we're gonna give you a total tour of. But before I do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. All right, so here I am in the Mastermind Dungeon. <laughs> this is where we start hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seedlings that go into our farm right here in this garage. And this is Bo. Say hey, Hello, Bo. how are you? And he is our seed starting master and he does everything indoors, underneath grow lights. So we're gonna interview him and he's gonna talk about what he does, how, it do how he does it, and how you can do the same process at home in your garage or in your living room or wherever. So why don't you tell them a little bit about your background so they know that you're not just a, you know, nobody. So, so I've been growing tomatoes since the late 60s. Uh, probably about 68, 69, I started gardening in Illinois and I actually had a small tomato farm in Illinois for many, many years and grew a lot of stuff. So it's been a long time that I've been growing stuff. So basically he knows his stuff. I'm still learning stuff from him that I didn't even realize. In fact, he's the expert when it comes to starting things indoors. I do it outdoors. First thing I wanna talk about is how you are starting so many seedlings in such a small area. I mean, this is like, what, I don't know, to give the viewers a sense, it's like an eight by eight area. Yeah, it's half of my garage. Uh, I've got racks set up with various grow lights that I've tried and retried. And um, you basically try, the, try different grow lights and see what works for you. Um, and this is kind of what it, happened in my garage yeah so there's what's important to note is there is so many different ways to grow indoors there are very complex setups if you go to a hydroponics shop you're gonna see setups that are really expensive and really involved down to this setup which I would say this is like it's not complicated but it's definitely nope. not rudimentary like you've no. got some really cool little tips and tricks that you've learned over the years that make it much more uh, precise right. and successful, right. which is really important. So one of the like first things I want to point out, I love this. I was like, okay, well, apparently he's like drinking a lot of protein powder while he's <laughs> starting his seedlings. He actually pre-sifts his soil. So check this out. Here, give me your hand. So that goes on the top of your seeds because it's One of the sifted. common mistakes that people make when they're planting seeds is they plant them too deep mm -hmm. and the seeds never get a chance to come through the top of the soil. So you want to start with a very fine mixture like this and you really only want an eighth to a quarter of an inch covering your seed and you always want to keep it moist at all times. Yeah, so, th so this is seed critical. starter, right? So this is this that yep, you've used? Yep, just sifted. And how do you sift it? I you have just... a... A uh, little sifter upstairs. Like a little kitchen, kitchen sifter? sifter yeah. Okay, kitchen yeah, sifter, see, there yeah. you go, using yep. your kitchen stuff. It's real simple. So what's really neat, for those of you who are starting indoors that want to keep things neat and tidy, and that's actually one of my favorite things about his setup is it's really tidy. There's not soil everywhere. In fact, I probably got more soil on your carpet probably. than you have all year. <laughs> um, and it's from little tricks like this, yep. sifting your, your soil outside, bringing it in in a clean container so that you have it and you're not making a mess in your kitchen. And actually and in you your can, kitchen, you have a bunch of starts as well. You can do it over this too. This is the soil. Oh, that's a great tip too. So there's the, there's the soil there. So I would start everything right here and throw the dirt in there. I mean, that's how I would start. Yeah. That's how I would start all the stuff. Fabulous. So let's actually go through, do a little run, run through for our viewers of how you start your, your seed. So you take your six pack, which is what you're starting stuff in. Right. And so now I, it's worth noting that the benefit of starting in these six packs is it's a bigger volume of seeds so that, or I'm yeah. sorry, it's a bigger volume of soil 
so, so that it holds on to more moisture and you don't have to pot up. Right. Which is huge. We actually just did a video on, on potting up and it's a lot of work. By starting right. it that way, you're one step ahead of the game. Right. And then from here, I place it in the trays and fill it up with water and give it a day, day and a half so that these are completely wet. Yeah, you can feel how heavy Very these heavy, are. Very heavy, yep. And see, there's moisture actually coming out of the bottom. So you're not overhead watering. You're, you're letting me soak, yep. suck up the moisture for a full day before planting. I mean, that's the best way to water is from underneath and not from water. the top. But sometimes you have to water from the top because yeah. uh, that's just how it is. Yeah, you're preaching to a choir. Bottom watering's my favorite of right. all time. So again, this keeps it nice and neat. What would you typically do next? So then I will place some seeds in a tray. Oh, sweet, you got some of our pelleted seeds. My baby's already about that big. I have some upstairs, but... Oh, these are the pelleted ones. Yep, yeah. those are the pelleted cauliflower. Real simple. Now, the reason why we carry the pelleted cauliflower is because they're expensive seeds, you don't want to waste them, and it's very easy to put one per cell. So you're not going to lose any. You're going to maximize the plants you get from one seed packet which is great. And then I'm gonna just take my seed topper, my handy dandy spoon, <laughs> and just lightly dust over the top. Only one about a quarter of an inch. Now what's great about having it sifted too, let's say, let's say you're drinking some bourbon while you're doing this, for example. Okay, good. And uh, you get a little heavy handed, you put too much se uh, seed soil on top, the seeds are likely still going to break through because it's really good sifted soil to yep. start with. And I got my little sprayer. Let me just make sure that it's... Good thing about being in the garage, you can just spray it. So then I would just... I'm going to water them down. And that's about it. Now let's talk about moving them underneath the lights. I think the viewers definitely want to know uh, a lot about lights because they're confusing. Which light do you buy? How close does it need to go? Does it need to be an LED? You know. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of lights. I prefer the LED for one, less power. Okay. Because you've got to keep your lights on 14 to 18 hours a day for your seedlings. Wow. So, so that's long a long time. I've got them on timers, so I'm going to put everything on a timer in here. And then the, the trays are going to go underneath like this. And I basically have it set so my seedlings can get about four to six inches and then they come out of the light. And they'll go into the, the greenhouse, greenhouse and they'll off. get hardened off for one to two weeks. Now, so something I wish that the viewers could feel, like this LED light, there's like no heat coming off of these. Right, that's these, the other advantage. These are also plastic, whereas if we look at this one behind us here, this is not an LED. This has incandescent bulbs, which, ow, <laughs> shit, it's that's hot. hot. <laughs> They're hot. It gets really hot. Wow, yes. it gets very hot. So you can burn your plants, and if one of these breaks, then you're, you're breaking a pretty nasty light bulb, which I don't know what's inside them, but I think it's terrible stuff. Yeah, you don't. So that's kind of, you know, the different um, drawbacks. Now, are the LEDs more expensive in general? Uh, the LEDs might be a little bit more money, but you're also gonna get five times the life out of them. Okay. Uh, a fluorescent bulb won't last forever. Yep. Uh, yeah, and, the, whereas you probably will never replace your LED. What money you put into buying these, you will probably save on your electric bill. If, if you have right. a big setup like this, because you're, you're, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 lights going. And that one too. 12 lights going. Right. So that could really add up over yes, a long period yes. of time. So you really want to go LED if you're going to have okay. multiple lights. It just, you Fabulous. know, power wise makes a lot of sense. Yep. So there's a few other things I really want to point out that I just think are so cool. Uh, what is this? This is your temperature? and Temperature and humidity because you want to check, you always want to check your uh, temperature and your humidity. Is, is this inside of here? Or no, just no, it's just, the, in the, it's just in the general the area, yeah. So you have an idea of what your temperatures are. Right. So this is to look at the temperature and the humidity in your room. Particularly, this is important, like, I'm imagining when you were in Iowa, that was really important to know. If it's yes. minus 30 degrees outside, right. you need to know what your temperatures right. are. What's a good average temperature that viewers should try to make their um, 
you know, their seed starting room. Any, anywhere between 70 and 80 is fine. Good germination rate. Right. Yep. So the other thing that we haven't talked about was germinating your seeds in a colder climate or where you should be using a heating pad to germinate your seeds. So that's another aspect that we probably could talk about. Yeah, absolutely. So heating pads, in my experience, for Southern California, we've mostly used them for peppers. Right. Because peppers are a pain in the butt to start. Yep. But if you were in an area, like when you were in Iowa, how many... I mean, Illinois. I, you're Illinois. Ah, one of those flyover it's states. It's cold, though. It's very cold. I'm from Kansas, so I could say that. <laughs> uh, would you have heating pads on everything? Yes. Okay. Because you have to. Otherwise... Right. So I'm gonna... starting my seeds in January Okay. when it's literally zero degrees outside. Okay. But here's a good question for, for... And I think this is a question viewers might be thinking. Okay, it's zero degrees outside, but inside your house, it's probably like a warm enough temperature. Why would you still probably 70, 72, but I want my soil temps to be 80 that's degrees. It. That's it. So viewers, 80 that's... to 85 for pe 85 for peppers is ideal. Okay. That's a key point that I think as a new gardener, it's hard to remember or hard to understand that it's right. not just about the ambient air temperature. It's about the temperature in that soil. Right. Because the seeds are actually coming in contact with that soil. So if the soil is actually only registering it at you know 65 or 55 or what have you, right. they're going to germinate a lot slower than if you have a heating mat making sure that it's going to that, that this. And I have an infrared gun to check the soil temps. Oh, where's that toy? I want to see it. Down. You want me oh, to get yeah, it? Yeah. I can get it. It's yeah, I want to see it. Go All grab right. it. Let me go grab it. Perfect. Real quick. And we pause now for a momentary commercial break. So this is your toy. Right, it's my handy dandy infrared thermometer for checking the soil temps, okay. or any temps really. And so you're just gonna basically pop it down on the soil and you can see it's 71 degrees, 72. Okay, so- Which so is probably okay for starting tomatoes. Yeah. But, but for peppers, it's not gonna work. Well, they will germinate slower at 71 degrees right. than they will at 85 degrees. Yes. So that's another key thing right. for viewers to know. There are optimal temperatures for seeds to start right. and they will, they will germinate quickly and more evenly in your tray if you get that. Now, this is so important. This is important to, to realize. So this was 71, right? This right here, it's 77 degrees in this area which is a good reason why heating mats can be so important because even though the room itself is 70 degrees, it doesn't mean this, the actual right. soil is. And that is, a, is probably a relation to the moisture in the soil, I would imagine. And I, I can like totally hear my sixth grade science teacher like getting <laughs> mad at me that I don't really know why that is. So I wanna actually see underneath here. So this is 83. So this is 83 because it's underneath the light. And knowing that temperature difference is a big deal. So the tomatoes, that you, if you were to leave them here, they're going to start a hell of a lot slower than Right, they're probably going to take seven to ten days. Okay, I'm playing with your toy, but now I want to see what, what this is. Damn, that's 160. No wonder it burnt my... Yeah. Head. So, LED. Yeah, there's... 92. Fluorescent bulbs. Yeah. 125. And these are a lot more powerful LEDs than like that one yeah. or that one. And these are totally different. I'm just going to walk around like doing temperatures. What's your temperature? <laughs> <laughs> really? That's awesome. Okay. So this is a great little, this would be like an awesome thing to ask for Christmas if you're an avid seed starter. Yeah. And they're not too expensive. I mean, we have a local kitchen store right around the corner. Okay. So I'm there like every week. They know Getting me. Toys. I get discounts and I don't okay. even know why. Okay, Bo, so like my, uh, is there smoke coming out of my ears? Because I'm so excited <laughs> and I'm getting just like really into this and thinking about all the different things that we need to talk to viewers about. But we're gonna wrap up this video. So you guys stay tuned because we're gonna do another one and we're just gonna continue to jump into all the fun, nitty gritty things you need to know to start your seeds successfully indoors. Mm -hmm.